The Children's Church of God welcomes you today as we share God's Word with you. I'm Pastor Ronald Smith, and this is Palm Sunday, and we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem just prior to his crucifixion. This is a special day. It's a special week that we're celebrating. Um, there's uh, three things I want us to look at today surrounding Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And uh, I want to just start with the uh, King of Peace. I want to talk a little bit about praise for the King. And then I want to talk about forgotten King. And uh, so let's just get started today in God's Word. If you'd like to follow along, <clears throat> I'll be going through uh, several points of Scripture. But I want to start off with talking about the King of Peace. Matthew 21, <clears throat> and beginning there at verse 1. It says, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied with a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And you can look up this uh, prophecy found in Zechariah uh, chapter 9, verse 9. And it says, So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their clothes on, him, on, on them and set him on them, on, on the, uh, the foal. Through uh, many of the Old Testament prophets, uh, God had told Israel of the coming Messiah, one in which would bring peace, assure victory over their enemies, and be a king reigning forever. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 uh, that we often read sometimes at, at Christmas time, but it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And uh, I'm so glad that, that today, I hope that you know the Prince of Peace. And Jesus was a king that was coming in peace. Uh, this here in Matthew is not a king who's coming to conquer. He's not coming to destroy. Neither was he coming into Jerusalem to reign at this time. God's very nature is love. And in his, his love, he was born into this world. This is the reason he came. He came to suffer the cruelty of the cross. He came on our behalf. It was our sins. It wasn't just the sins of the people prior to us. It wasn't just the sins of the people of that day, but it was for our sins, all sins, that Jesus came and went to the cross of Calvary. And we look at this today and realize this, this, this is why he came. He went, came on our behalf that we might know him, that we might know Jesus, the Son of God, and that we might have an eternity and a hope for the future, that we'll have a, a, a life that goes beyond the life that we're living in. Because uh, this world down here is, is kind of, uh, sometimes can look bleak, sometimes it can look bad. But thank God that we have a hope that goes beyond this life and this realm that we're in right now. And Jesus made that possible. There's coming a day uh, that we will see judgment. And uh, Jesus will be coming as a conquering king on this earth. But not here in scripture at this point in time. Jesus shows through the scripture, I want you to notice this morning, that he is omniscient. That means he knows all things. He knows everything that's going on. Uh, much like uh, we see here in this scripture, uh, he told Peter at one time to cast a line, and the fish that he brought up was to have the tribute money uh, in the mouth of the fish for, for Jesus and, and, and Peter. He says, uh, here he knew exactly the same thing. He knew exactly what was going on in Matthew 21 when he told them to go look for the colt. He knows all things. He knew 
where this, this cult was. He knew uh, exactly what would have to be said for them to bring the cult to him. God shows, even right here, Jesus shows that his, his authority, his power, his knowledge of everything, that he can see everything going on right there uh, to his disciples, and, you know, to cause to them, uh, you know, that probably seemed like a strange, uh, strange thing to say. You know, they, uh, you know, if they had had... Uh, guns back then, you know, somebody might have shot them for uh, possibly, you know, taking uh, off the, with the foal and the donkey. But we see that Jesus is omniscient. He knows everything. And uh, we look at this today. He knows what's going on today. You know, Jesus is, is still at the right hand of the Father. And God is on the throne today. Can I uh, tell you, you don't have to necessarily worry about this world. All you got to do is know who's in control of this world. You got to know that Jesus is in control and he will take care of us. You know, uh, we're just thankful today that he is all knowing. He knows exactly where we're at. He knows if you're listening to me right now, he knows exactly what you're thinking. He knows exactly what's going on in your mind. He knows the worries. He knows the fears. He knows the heaviness of your heart. He knows exactly uh, all the things that you try to wonder, how is this going to shape out? How is this going to shape down? How is this going to move? How is this thing going to turn around? Uh, how are we going to get out of the sickness? How are we going to keep our family safe? How are we going to keep food on the table? Whatever it may be that's going through your mind right now, I'm here to tell you God already knows where you're at. He already he knows what the problems we're facing and he can make a, a turnaround for us if we'll just put our trust and faith in him today. <clears throat> He's omniscient. He knows everything. You're not going to blindside our Lord. The other thing I want you to see that Jesus is omnipotent. He's in or in other words, it says he has all power. He has unlimited power. There is no power greater than our God. He's riding here, as it says, a riding an animal that had never been ridden before. Uh, now, if you try to do this, you try to get an animal that hasn't never been rid, but ridden before, and I don't tell you, it is, it's going not, it's going to buck. It's going to want to uh, to kick you off of this thing because it it it, it does it's not it's not natural it's not what they are used to they have to be broke they have to be gotten into uh, they have to be trained they have to be uh, exercised in this manner but here Jesus sits upon this colt that has never been ridden before what does this show us today uh, it shows us that God he is God he is ruler of the universe and he has all power and authority over everything and this this creature this this cult it, I believe that it knew that its maker was riding upon it I believe that this 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 cult knew that the the power that he had and he submits submitted himself uh, to be ridden that he might uh, bring glory unto God and, and that's what this this creation does everything this creation does uh, we look at the springtime and look at the blossoms and everything uh, all of that to me it gives glory unto God who, who is worthy to be praised it shows his power it shows his his greatness it shows his his his, his grace and uh, in everything we do his power is unlimited you can even see his power uh, in, in the in the power of the of the shape of a delicate rose, uh, I mean, there's there's no way that, uh, like I said, you, you might can be able to unfold the rose, but you cannot close the ro rose back up. Uh, you know, you can't do uh, you can't do these things. You can't make these things to form by our own hands. It is God. <clears throat> How about you today? Jesus came in riding in Jerusalem as king of peace do you know the king of peace uh, are your sins forgiven you does jesus live in your heart he can that's why he came that we may know the peace of knowing our savior god jesus said in john 14 27 peace i leave with you my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We do not have 
uh, peace in this world. Why? You know, you may say, why do we not have peace in this world? It's because God has given us free will, free choice. You have a choice to follow Jesus or not. But just know that at the end of life, without Jesus, you're going to find destruction. Jesus wants us to know his peace of heart and mind now. Even in the midst of a troubled world, we can have peace and assurance that God is there. We can have peace and assurance that we're ready to meet the Lord should, should we leave this world and, and take our last breath or, or, or if this world goes on through crisis. We know that, that God, if, if we're saved, we've been forgiven, we can have peace. John 16, 33 says, These things have I spoken unto you. This is Jesus he says that in me you might have peace. In the world you, have, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Aren't you thankful that Jesus overcome the world? Aren't you thankful for his grace and his mercy today? The second point I want to talk to you today is about praise for the king. Over in Matthew 21, verse 8, it goes on to say, and a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Oh, aren't you thankful? What a day that would have been just to be able to see the praise and the worship and to see uh, uh, you can do that right here today. You can do that in your homes today. You can worship the Lord. You can praise him. You can magnify him for he's worthy. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory and honor today. We look and see the meaning Looking up the word Hosanna, we find that the one place that this word was ever used was in the Old Testament, Psalm 118 and 25. But it does not appear in its translated form, but the word is for this phrase, save now. The word as please save or save now changed from a cry to praise the day Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And now is used as a praise, salvation has come. Salvation has come. Has it come to your house? Has it come to the place where you abide? Is it a place, to, uh, do you feel his love? Do you feel his peace? Do you feel his joy? Do you know that your sins have been forgiven? Oh, there's a, there's a place that we can rejoice and, and be glad in him even in our darkest hour. Even in the worst of times, we can rejoice in knowing that our sins have been forgiven and that we have an eternity to live with him forever. Psalm 118 says this. Uh, this is the scripture I was referring to just a moment ago. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And then he goes on to say, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Oh my Oh, we worship you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your name is to be praised. You are uh, uh, the Son of God. You are the Son of David. You are uh, uh, to be worshipped. You are, uh, we do say Hosanna. We do cry, salvation has come. Luke 19 tells us a little, uh, different, uh, a little different aspect of this this scene, a, a different description here, if you will, uh, from a different viewpoint. But it says in Luke 19, 37, And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God. God, uh, with a loud voice, it says, For all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. And glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, 
rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Oh my, what a God that we serve. What a, what a you know, uh, this disrupted the, the apple cart, I guess, if you could say it turned it over, so to speak, for the Pharisees because they saw people that looked at Jesus they saw Jesus being worshipped. They saw Jesus being the Messiah, being called the, the coming king, being called, uh, worshipped uh, as the one that was to come through all the prophets. They saw exactly who he was through, through a, a, a temporary lens, I guess you could say, of, of who Jesus was. And they were worshipping him. And the Pharisees, this, you know, their, their power struggle, they were, they were in it for power. You know, they, they, they were like, you know, oh, you got to stop these people Jesus and what they meant was we don't want them following you we want them to be following us but Jesus here in this uh, part of Luke he says uh, we wonder sometimes why did Jesus say the rocks will cry out uh, one commentary says that Jesus was talking about the gravestones and that he would have opened them and raised the dead to testify of this which he could do, and there's nothing impossible with God. But I also believe he could have created a people out of the earth around him, for God is looking for people to praise him. Look at these scriptures concerning his creation, concerning us. In the beginning, Genesis 2 and 7 says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When the children of Israel were disobedient in Deuteronomy 9 and 14, God tells Moses, let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven and I will make of thee a nation mightier, mightier and greater than they. Now, we know that he didn't do this. God and ended up and, and uh, gave mercy uh, when he could have destroyed them and took them all out. Psalm 103 and 14 says, For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. You know, we're nothing but uh, dust today. We're, we're water and, and dust. Uh, it, it's an amazing creation that God has made. Matthew 3 and 9 says, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. He says, For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Oh, what a day of rejoicing. What a day that we should praise the Lord. Uh, and we look at this, and now some may believe that Jesus was just saying that the rocks were going to praise him that day. Uh, but keep in mind, he is the Lord of all creation. Everything in this universe already does what he has created it to do. But humans, you and I, again, we're the only ones who can praise him out of our own will. And, and the Bible tells us that God is, is looking for uh, such to praise him. He's looking for our praise, our praise out of our own free will. He's looking for our, our, our voices to be lifted up. Will your voice be lifted up? Will you praise the king? Will you rejoice in your salvation? I pray today that this week uh, you are closer to God than you've ever been, that you feel his presence uh, walking around you and with you. And through every situation this week, you may come against uh, even even when uh, you feel foreboding thoughts or, or heaviness of heart, whatever it may be that comes upon you, I just pray that the Spirit and the presence of God begins to come around you. You begin to worship Him and praise Him and glorify His name. And I, I believe that you'll see the darkness flee uh, when you begin to praise the light, the one who has made all things. I believe that everything in this universe does, as I said, what it was created to do. But he's looking for us to praise him. Psalm 148 and 13 says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Isaiah 12 and 4 says this, In that day shall ye see, Shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. 
Oh, God, we just praise you today. You are worthy of praise. You are higher than everything. You, there is none above you. You are righteous. You are glorious. Lord, we praise you for your power. We praise you for your knowledge. We praise you for salvation. We praise you for healing. Lord, we know that you're coming soon. And Lord, as we take this Palm Sunday, God, oh, that we could have been there to see the presence and the power of God. And we could have seen the worship that was do your name that day. We are praising your name today. Oh, praise him this week. Praise him, praise him. And finally today, I just want to end with this thought today. The forgotten king. The children of Israel under Moses forgot God who delivered them out of Egypt. Joshua told Israel after the Canaan uh, conquest Choose you this day whom you shall serve. But they forgot God. Time after time after time after time they forgot God. But they always called on him in a day of trouble. This day they caught a glimpse of his majesty. This day they praised the Messiah, Hosanna in the highest the king who would put down Israel's enemies had come. But in less than one week's time, many of the same people were either scattered for fear or were crying, crucify him. In less than one week's time, this scene of, of all the joy, all the gladness, all the praise, all the, all the palm waving, all, all the coats thrown strode in the way, uh, all the palm branches put in the way, uh, just opening the red carpet, so to speak, for Jesus to come into Jerusalem and, and to worship him. In less than one week's time, they'd forgotten. They'd forgotten the vision they saw. They forgot the joy they felt. They forgot the, the uh, jubilant time that they had. And in less than one week's time, they'd forgotten who he was. They forgot about Jesus as the one who fulfilled scripture, riding in on a donkey as king of peace. How about you today? Have you forgotten him? Maybe you don't want to think about death or eternity, but it's coming to us all. Maybe you remembered uh, to call on him in times of trouble, but as, as the days, better days come along, he's forgotten again. The Bible says, therefore, in Matthew 24, 44, let me say that. Therefore, be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Jesus is coming. You don't have to be unprepared. Sinner, you can repent of your sins and turn to Jesus. You will find his love, his peace, and his joy to take you through anything you face in this life. Backslider, remember the prodigal son. Uh, Jesus is there for you today. If you return and ask for his forgiveness, the prodigal son, you know the story, is how the, the, the young son took all that his his his. his money from his father and he went out and he spent it all riotously and he came back so he finally came to himself and he says i'll go back home and just be a, a father's servant but when he came back the father went to him and opened his arms up and hugged him and put his arms around him may you experience that today if you're backslidden and finally christian as i said and heard others say likewise when this coronavirus is over with, I, I don't want to go back to normal. You may say, preacher, you, you strange. I, maybe I am. I don't want to go back to normal. I serve a God who deserves my utmost praise and adoration. And I must also serve him as a greater witness, for he is soon coming. We will get through this crisis of the coronavirus, but, but please, let's not go back to normal. Let's not forget the God who delivers you and me. We cry out to him in trouble. And in times of prosperity, we forget him. I don't think we as a, a body of believers, I don't think we as, I don't think anybody can forget who God is. Keep your eyes open, church. Look up for he's coming. 
We don't know the day, the hour. We don't know the year. We know that these troubles are going to come and they're going to go. And they may grow with more intensity as we get closer to the coming of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you this. If our faith and our trust is in him, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. And today I want to just close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you, Lord, on this Palm Sunday, Lord, we rejoice that you are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You are Yeshua. You are Jesus. Uh, you are the son of David. You are to be praised. You are to be worshipped. You are to be glorified. And Lord, we just uh, pray, praise you today. We uplift you today. And God, as we bring petitions before you, God, I just ask that uh, if one, whoever may listen to this uh, taping, Lord, this video in there, God, I pray that they will come to know, Lord, that you as their Savior if they don't know you. If they do, Lord, I pray that we will take this opportunity, God. And Lord, that we'll draw close to you. Lord, that we won't forget this time and we'll know that you brought us through. And we won't uh, turn our backs on you. We won't go slack and that our praise will get greater and our worship will be uh, more uh, glorifying and more edifying of you that we won't take coming into the house of God for granted ever again that we will come in with our praise and with our worship and God that we will magnify your name at every opportunity Lord not just our worship in church but God may our witness may we proclaim the name of Jesus more than anything that we ever do among all people wherever we're at Lord let there be a prayer and let there be a witness upon our lips in these days that we're living in. And God, let us not forget that you brought us through. God, I, I know you know who we are. You know that we're dust, the Bible says, and we read that this morning. But God, may we be uh, uh, ever mindful of your presence and your spirit and your power. And Lord, never let take that opportunity and never let those opportunities go to waste and be forgotten. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. We pray that you would touch our nurses and our doctors and our uh, people on the front lines as fighting the sickness and disease. God, I pray that you would pour out your spirit, Lord, across this land and across this world today. And God, we just thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We pray that this is a great Easter week and a celebration of our Lord Jesus Christ.